Okay, talking about Mother's Day today. I've got to bring the truth. Whether the truth hurts or not, the truth must be proclaimed. Uh, an interesting little thing was that yep, Mother's Day was yesterday, and my daughter kept on being asked, did she make breakfast? Did she do things for her mother? Let me say, first of all, as a born-again Christian, I am a King James Bible-believing uh, man. I believe the King James Bible is the Word of God outside of nothing else but the King James. I believe a Christian should pray for his mother every single day of the year. But as far as what got my heart yesterday is, uh, you know, did to my daughter, did you do something for mother on Mother's Day? Why can't we do something for mother any other day? Now, I'm going to put a wet rag. Because I'm going to read from you the scriptures, and I'm going to teach you the history, which is not taught today. Now, if you go to Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 18, is where my heart is set upon today's lesson. And in Jeremiah 7, 18, we see the children gathered wood, and the fathers kindled, kindled the fire. The women needed their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. Now get that queen of heaven because we're going to talk about her in a minute. Queen is a woman. And to pour out drink offerings onto other gods. Other gods. Get that. We're going to look at that in a minute. And they provoked me, God, to anger. So they go out and they make cakes and drinks to Mama, the Queen of Heaven. You say, oh, that's your own interpretation. That's your I just read it from the Bible. And it's a family event. You got the father, you got the children, and you got the women all about the household of the Queen. Now, I'm going to read to you today the history of Mother's Day. And we saw the Queen of Heaven. We saw God's small g-o-d-s. We saw that God is angered, being provoked to anger. And yet, Christians celebrate things, and they don't even know what they're celebrating. They don't study history. They don't look into the facts. Well, Mother's Day. The majority of the countries that celebrate Mother's Day do so on the second Sunday of May. On this day, it is common for mothers to celebrate with presents, uh, dough made into cakes and drink offerings. Okay. You know, you give your mom a present on this one day. Is there something wrong giving your mom a present? No. But when you take a holiday and, and, you, and you, you celebrate it without even knowing what you're celebrating. Special attention from their families, friends, and loved ones. Well, didn't we see that in Jeremiah 7? The whole family got together to do the Queen of Heaven. Spiritual origin of Mother's Day. The traditional practice of honoring mother on motherhood is root of, of it's ancient, it's old. Ancient times had strong symbolic and spiritual overtones as societies tend to celebrate goddesses. Well, we just saw that in Jeremiah chapter 7. Let me read that again. It says, and, uh, and the children gathered wood and the fathers kindled fire. And, may, and the women needed their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. And to pour out drink offerings unto other gods. Gee, isn't this what the, now what we're starting to study that's provoking God to anger? That we haven't got into how many minutes yet into this thing? And we're already seeing Mother's Day is a celebration of goddesses. Female gods. And symbols of motherhood. Rather than actual mothers. 
Have you ever gone to a church where they've given women gifts on Mother Day, Mother's Day, and they may not even be a mother, but they still got the gift? Objects of adoration range from uh, female deities to the Christian church. Oh, you mean that people who worship God's G-O-D-S and, and people who worship God G-O-D fall under this category? Yes, they do. The personal family orientation of Mother's Day is a relatively new phenomenon. Only in the past few centuries did celebrations of motherhood develop into uh, family focus, human focus. And only in the last century did Mother's Day take on a commercial overtone. Now, I want to look at this commercial overtone. I want to look at the church in the world. One of the earliest historical records of society celebrating a mother deity can be found among the ancient Egyptians. That's where God called Egypt, I mean, that's where God called Israel out of Egypt and told them, don't go back no more. Stop going to Egypt. Come to me. Don't get horses out of Egypt. Don't go back to Egypt. Egypt is a type of world in the Bible. It took the, the God's people, the Jews, and served them with rigor. But yet, the gods still come out of Egypt. Aaron made that golden calf that was a symbol of, of Egypt that they come out. Who had held a festival yearly to honor the goddess, goddess. Goddess. We've got the gods, G-O-D-S, Jeremiah 7, 18. Her stern yet handsome head is typically crowned by a pair of bullhorns. Bullhorns enclosed of a fiery sun orb. Baal, the sun god. She is most often uh, sitting on a throne in her pictures and, and, and her things. So she's the queen if she's sitting on a throne. Well, we haven't even got three paragraphs. And, and studying Jeremiah 7 18, we've seen Mother's Day is a pagan. It's a goddess. It is not right for the Christian to celebrate. But yet the churches do. And how many churches across this planet Earth had a Mother's Day meeting? Had a Mother's Day service? A Mother's Day uh, outline sermon? And yet but you Christians are so foolish to know and not to know. And as the story goes, after Iris' brother, husband... Orisis, O-S-I-R-I-S, brother, husband. She married her brother? That's the type of Adam and Eve. Was slain and dismembered in 13 pieces by her jealous brother, Seth. That's the name of, a, that's the, name of the other brother of Adam, I mean, of Cain and Abel, Seth. They're stealing out of the Bible. 13 pieces, well, there's a story in the book of Judges where a guy takes his wife and cuts her in 12 pieces. I guess this one did it for uh, Baker's Dozen. Isis reassembled Horace's body and used it to impregnate herself. Wow, science fiction. She then gave birth to Horace, who she hid among the reeds, lest he be slaughtered by Seth. Now, come on, that's Moses. That's the story of Moses. Horace grew up and defeated Seth. Well, that's not Moses there. God defeated the Pharaoh. Moses did not defeat the Pharaoh. God did. And then he became the first ruler of unified Egypt. Thus, Iris became her stature as the mother of Pharaohs. Can I read this again? And the children gathered wood, and the father kindled the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. Iris also held a place at the Roman temple. Despite being a foreign deity, the festival of Iris was used by the Romans to commem commemorate an important battle and mark the beginning of winter. 
The celebration, which lasts for three days, centered around the most female dancers, musicians, and singers. Oh, you mean Herod when he was, when he had his his daughter dance before him before John the Baptist lost his head? Belly dancer. It is an interesting note. Now get this, please. It is an interesting note that the mother and son imagery of Isis and Horus, in which Isis cr cradles and suckles her son, is strikingly similar, similar to that of the Virgin Mary and baby Jesus. Oh, did we just hit it on the hand? Can I read this again, please? And the children gathered wood, and the fathers kindled the fire, and the women need their dough to make cakes to Mary, Queen of Heaven. Things haven't changed. You're worshiping a mother god. G-O-D-D-D-E-S-S. -S. Isis may, be, may have been early on the Rome scene, but it was that uh, there was two other mother goddesses. Cybele from Pydria in ancient uh, Antolia, which is modern Turkey, and Re from Greece. And perhaps laid the most important foundation for the worship and celebration of motherhood in Europe. So we've already looked at motherhood in, in uh, Africa as a goddess. Now we're looking in the area of Turkey, we're looking through Europe as goddesses again. The Phrygian goddess Cybele, C Y B E L E, has roots dated back 6,000 years to Neolithic times. The Phrygians celebrate a mother goddess whom realm was the earth, mountains, and caverns, natural surrounds, and wild animals. By 600 BC, the worship of Pygrelian mother goddess had been adopted into most of Asia Minor and parts of Greece. This is before Christ. This is before that one church, that one motherly church, that you are to worship the mother of God. The Greeks named her Cybele and also called her Mater for mother. At the same time, some Greeks already worshipped another goddess, motherly godless, Rhea. The Greek mother of gods, Rhea was born from the union of a Greek goddess, Gaia, the personification of Earth. Mother Earth? Mother Earth is connected with Mother's Day. Why is it connected to Christians? And Uranus, the sky god, Wow. You do know who the god of the air is, don't you? The two mother goddesses, Cyber and Rhea, were so similar in their nature and icon, and icons, the pictures and statues and all that, that they became closely, almost interchangeably intertwined in Greek life and culture. Isn't that great? It just carried on from one on one age to another age to another age, and here we are in 2013. Am I against motherhood? Am I no? I'm not. Am I against Mother's Day? Shall I continue reading? Every day should be Mother's Day. Every day should be Father's Day. Every day should be Husband Day. Every day should be uh, Wife's Day. How come we don't have a God's Day? How come we don't have a Jesus Christ Day? Early festivals. Early festivals celebrating the Antonian mother goddess was said to be at times so wild that they were evidently discouraged or banned. What would be so wild that you would have to make it outlaw, I wonder? But we go on. European celebration. By the 16th century, as ancient Roman religious and culture traditions in Europe and England gave way to the spread of Christianity, 
Halloween and celebrations became part of the La Laetrine Sunday. The fourth Sunday of Lent in the Christian calendar, the 40 days of fasting preceding Easter Sunday. Now this has nothing to do with Bible Christianity of the Lord Jesus Christ. This has to do with that Papal church. This has to do with uh, pagan festivals and traditions that are outside the Lord Jesus Christ. Early Christians in England initially used the day to honor the Virgin Mary, the mother of Christ. Find me the Bible, chapter and verse, where it says you are to honor Christ's mother. Now, she was a wonderful woman that God chose to be the virgin, the mother of Christ. But where is she told that she is to have a day to honor her? Where are we told? We are told to, to lift up Christ. We're told to lift up God. We're told to go out and tell people about Jesus. Nowhere are we told to give Mary the time of day. Nowhere is Mary in the book of Acts when she is mentioned that she is given the, the authority over anybody. But yet, yeah, early Christians in England initially used the day to honor the Virgin Mary, the mother of Christ. You already see that we see a foundation of Mother's Day really doesn't have to do with mom, our mother. It has to do with the, the, the worship of Mary, the worship of the Queen of Heaven, the worship of goddesses. But yet, every year, she in this holiday sneaks into the church where the devil sits in the front front row, sits in that front pew, and amens the preacher, while Christ stands outside, knocking on the door, waiting for somebody to come out of that mess. And if you don't like my talk, if you don't like what I'm saying, because I just kicked you with the word of God in scripture and history. I apologize not. This place of worship would be decorated with jewels, flowers, and other offerings. What did your church do yesterday? Individual mothers recognized. In the 17th century, a clerical decree in England broadened the celebration from the focus on the church and the Virgin Mary to include real mothers. Well, Mary was a real mother. But scripturally, we're not told to honor. Matter of fact, if you read the scriptures, when Jesus talked about his mother, he said, woman. And in many times, he rebuked her. And one time they said, Jesus, your mother and, and brother are here. He said, who is my mother? Who is my brother? But they that do the word. Now, I'm not saying Jesus Christ was disrespectful to his mother. But there's also a place in the Bible that says, uh, listen, if, in order to be a disciple, you may have to hate your mother. When the fact is, when your mother does not want to do what Christ said, your mother does not want to believe in Jesus Christ, your mother does not want to do what the Bible tells her to do, then you got to put her away like Asa did with her mother, that his mother that made a grove and made an idol. He put her away for not following the true God. And that hurts. I thank God my mother is saved. And I can pray for my mother. But there are you out there, listen. You're having fellowship. You're, you're having time with your mother. And you really shouldn't be. And to she does what the Bible says. It's called separation. It's called division. And that's called scripture. You are to honor your mother every day in prayer. You are to call your mother most often. You are to send your mother a card just to say, Hey, I was thinking of you, Mom. You are to thank your mother for all the stuff that she's done for you. It's not one day. Only an American can, can have such a foolish thing of a holiday. Imagine a holiday called Labor Day and they don't work. Well, let's get back to this. Mothering Day became an especially compassionate holiday toward the working class of England. During this Lenten Sunday, servants and trade workers were allowed to travel back to their towns of origin to visit their families. Well, that's nice. That's, that, 
That's appropriate. But it has records. It has traces back to the Virgin Mary. It has traces. It has origins back to goddesses. Mothering Day also provided a reprieve from the fasting and penance of Lent. So see, you still have the church attached to it. You still have the Virgin Mary attached to it. You just gave it another name. And that's what the church is doing today. They give it another name to be Christian. Listen, I can give poop a new name. With the proper appetizer, I could probably sell used diapers in America. It's still a dirty, dirty, stinking diaper. Families across England enjoyed a family feast. Mothers were pre presented with cakes. Can I read this again? Jeremiah 7.18, the children gathered the wood, and the fathers kindled the fire, and the women kneaded the dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. And to other gods. That they may provoke me, God, to anger. Wow! Jeremiah 7, 18. They presented cakes. And flowers. Again, what happened on Sunday, on Sunday Mother's Day in your church? Were there flowers? And beloved, distant children came home to visit. So the children came to the mothers. The mothers didn't go to their children. If you're going to follow tradition, the American celebration. When the first English settlers came to America, they discontinued the tradition of Mothering Day. This would be the, the, the ones that came over to Mayflower. Okay, pay attention. This is a American history lesson. While the British holiday would live on, the American Mother's Day would be invented with an entirely new history centuries later. One explanation for the settlers discontinuing Mother's Day was that they just did not have the time. They lived under harsh conditions and were forced to work long hours in order to survive in America. Another possibility, however, is that Mother and Day conflicted with the Puritan ideas. Those are the guys with the big black hats, the, the pilgrims. Fleeing England to practice a more conservative Christianity without being persecuted, the pilgrims ignored the most secular holidays. Amen! Glory to God! But later on, they would. This is my own. Later on, they would. They would persecute the true Bible believers later, and force persecutions throughout Massachusetts. But let's we'll get back to the lesson here. Pilgrims ignored the most sacred holidays, focusing instead on a no frills devotion to God. Amen. Why can't we have a no frills devotion to God in the churches today? Why do we got to put the world in there? Why do we got to put excitement in there? Why am I excited? Because there was one time the church actually looked to God. For example, even holidays such as Christmas and Easter were more somber occasions for pilgrims, usually taking a place in the church that was stripped of all orientation. In other words, you know, the church was plain and simple. There was no padding. There was no colored windows. There was, there was just a building, and God was the preeminence. God was the importance of it. Okay. Julia Ward Howells, Mother Days of 1870. The first North American Woman's Day was uh, from Julia Ward Howells, Mother's Day Proclamation on 1870. Despite having penned the battle in the Republic, a liar might have seen the glory of... No, you didn't. Shut up. You didn't see nothing. You saw Abraham Lincoln as the, the, as the crowning Messiah to set the blacks free. That's what you saw. You didn't see Jesus Christ coming. It's a lie. Twelve years earlier, how did become so distraught by the death and carnage of the Civil War that she called on 
mothers to come together and protest what she saw as fraternity of the sons killing sons of other mothers. And she wrote this poem. I'm not even going to waste time with it. With the following, she called the International Mother's Day Celebrating Peace and Motherhood. Listen, just by her song, song The Battle of the Republic, if you read those words, they're lies. Okay? A lie is a lie. Some of you just really hated me for that, but I'm sorry. Okay, let's read more about Miss Howell's Mother's Day. At one point, Howe even proposed converting July 4th into Mother's Day. Oh. In order to dedicate the national, nas nation's anniversary to peace. Evidently, however, June 2nd was designated for the celebration. Remember, Mother's Day has roots back in uh, the Virgin Mary, has roots in goddesses, and you brought cakes and flowers and all that. Remember what we read? And it goes back to Greece, and it goes back to uh, Africa and uh, Egypt, where the Bible calls it, you know, the type of the world where God called his people out of Egypt, was a place of bondage. In 1873, a woman's group in 18 North American cities, 18 is 6 plus 6 plus 6, okay, observed this new mother's holiday. How initially founded many, other, many of these celebrations, but most of them died out once she stopped footing the bill. Oh, she was paying, she was paying for her own thing. And once she stopped paying, it stopped. Well, let me ask you a question. In the age of, you know, uh, women's living all that, why was there no Father's Day proclaimed? Without father, you can't have children. You can't have a mother. Men's rights. Fatherly rights. The city of Boston, however, would continue celebrating house holiday for ten more years. Despite the... the this, uh, the failure of her holiday, how had nevertheless planted a seed that would blossom into what we know as Mother's Day today. And Christians are to plant seeds for Christians to be born again and to grow. Using seeds and all that which comes out of the Bible. A West Virginia woman's group led by Anna Reeves, Jarvis be began to celebrate an adaption of Howell's holiday. In order to reunite families and neighbors that had been divided between Union and Confederate sides of the Civil War, the group held a Mother's Friendship Day. Listen, it was Abraham Lincoln that divided the nation. He's the one that, you know, you couldn't separate the government no more. You couldn't have individual states. And he used the, the Negro as the prime, prime example. By, but he wanted the government, as they are today, trying to take your guns away, wanting the government to have the dominion and, the, and domination over its people. But we'll read on. After Anna Reeves Jarvis died, her daughter Anna M. Jarvis campaigned for a creation of an official Mother's Day remembrance of her mother in honor of peace. So Mother's Day was to be honored by one mother. The, uh, her, the, 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 the mother of Anna Jarvis, her mother Anna Reeves. In 1908, Anna petitioned the superintendent of the church where her mother had spent over 20 years teaching Sunday school. Okay, now we're in the church. Her request was honored, and on May 10, 1908, the first official Mother's Day celebration took place at Andrews Methodist Church in Gafton, West Virginia, and in a church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That sounds good. They are honored this woman by Mother's Day. But did the priest, did the rabbi, did the reverend, did the pastor, did whoever in charge of these two churches Go back into the history, as we are doing here in 2013, to look at what is the holiday, what is the truth for Mother's Day, and maybe the fact is it's too close to pagan. Maybe we should just change it a little. Why didn't we just call it the Anna Reeves Day? Why not? We got a Martin Luther uh, 
uh, Martin Luther, well, what his name is, I can't think of what his name is. We got a President's Day, we got a George Washington Day, we got an Abraham Lincoln Day, we get, why couldn't we have a, what's her name again, Anna Reeves Day? Because the devil has come in and put up this holiday that, that, hey, it's just a little innocent holiday, but guess what? You trace the roots back as we're doing now, and it goes all the way back to Egypt innocently. Now, I don't think that Anna Jarvis had any idea that you could trace this thing all the way back to Egypt. She was thinking about her mom. Glory for her thinking about her mom. But this thing, look how it's so far blown up, and we're not even at the end of this thing yet. What, what did Jesus say? A little leaven. A little leaven. You know what leaven was in the Bible? He said it was the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. It is the doctrine that kills. It is the doctrine of Satan. You saying Anna Jarvis had the doctrine of Satan? No, but she put it in there. Didn't Jesus say there was a woman that, took, that had a lump and put a little leaven in there and the whole lump became leaven? After this, this thing right here, you should remove Mother's Day. You should remove Father's Day from your church. Guarantee 99% of the churches on Mother's Day and Father's Day, you know what the message is going to be. The West Virginia event drew a congregation of a 407. I guess they counted them. And Anna Jarvis arranged... For white carnations, her mother's favorite flower, and adorn the patrons. Two carnations were given to every mother in attendance. Anything wrong with flowers? Did you read, go back and listen to what the flowers and all that was? They have a foundation that goes back to goddesses. Nothing wrong with flowers. Nothing wrong with giving your mom or your sweetheart flowers. But on this day that marks goddesses, it marks the queen of heaven, the marks of gift and flowers, it goes back. Today, white carnations are used to honor deceased mothers. White, pink, or red carnations pay tribute to mothers who are still alive. Andrews Methodist Church was incorporated into the International Mother's Day Shrine in the late 1960s and in 1992 became the National Historic Landmark for the significance in establishing of the National Mother's Day Celebration. Now let me ask you a question. Andrews Methodist Church, how long has it been since they won a soul to Jesus Christ? How long has it been since Mark 16? Go ye in all the world and teach and preach the gospel. How long? I don't know. I don't know the church personally. Maybe they are witnessing. Maybe they are being Christ-like uh, Christian. And maybe their motive is pure, but the motive goes back to what we've been studying. You can't do two evils and call it righteousness. You know that phrase as doing two wrongs to make a right. You can't do that which is wicked and expect it to come out to be holy. It don't work. Okay, 1908, a U.S. Senator from Nebraska, Elmer Burkett, proposed making Mother's Day a national holiday at the request of a young men's Christian association, YMCA. The proposal was defeated by the 1909, 46 states were holding Mother's Day services as part as of Canada and Mexico. I'll read that again. The proposal was defeated but by 1909, 46 states were holding Mother's Day services as well as part of Canada and Mexico. Anna Jarvis quit working and devoted herself time to the creation of Mother's Day. Endlessly petitioned state governments, business leaders, women's groups, churches, and other institutions and organizations. Churches devoted herself to, for Mother's Day, didn't devote yourself to going out and winning lost souls, not going out teaching the gospel, preaching the gospel to everybody, telling them about Jesus Christ. 
She finally convinced the World Sunday School Association to take to back her. To back her for Mother's Day? What does Mark 16 say? Go ye in all the world and create Mother's Day? Or does it say go ye in the world and preach the gospel? If a person is a Christian, dedicated Christian, and loves the Lord Jesus Christ, they're going to love their mother at all times. They don't need a day. But if you are a church, that you are of the world, you are of Satan, you will have a day, you will have something of Satan that goes back to goddesses and goes back to Egypt. I don't need a day to worship my mom. My mom is not to be worshipped. Jesus Christ is to be worshipped. I love my mom every day. This woman got a Sunday school. When a Sunday school should be teaching the Bible. Sunday school should be teaching the, the people to go out and witness. In 1912, West Virginia became the first state to officially recognize Mother's Day. And in 1914, Woodrow Wilson signed into national observance and declared the second Sunday in May as Mother's Day. I thought Sundays were dedicated to God. Oh, Queen of Heaven. You did de dedicate to God. A small G. All right. Uh, I like this one. I'm going to read just the fight over commercialization. The holiday flourished in the United States. Flowers, especially white carnations, became a very popular part of the celebration. One business journal, journal Florist Review, went so far as to print, this was a holiday that could be exploited. Everything else in America is exploited, including the church. And let me put a little P.S. here. And not only has this holiday be become commercialization, so has the church of the world of Egypt. As the church is bringing in the world and bringing in Egypt and bringing satanic things into the church, they like to read this along with the church is, is, is going on today. You don't think so? All right, let me read Jeremiah 7:18 again. The children gathered the wood, and the fathers need, kindled the fire. The women needed their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. What's one of the things that goes on in churches today? A cake sale. This was a holiday that could be exploited. But the budding commercialization of Mother's Day greatly disturbed Jarvis. That she opposed to the misuse of the holiday. The whole holiday wasn't supposed to be mother's. It was supposed to be her mother. What makes her mother to stand out above all the mothers? Was Jarvis's mother saved? Was her mother's name written out in the Lamb's Book of Life? My mother's name is. Jesus Christ knows the name of my mother. Does, does Jesus Christ know the name of Jar Jarvis's mother? I hope he did, or done. well, dead, she's dead. I hope Jarvis and her mother are in heaven in glory, read, looking down from the gates of heaven, down this message, say, preach it, brother, preach it. While the worldly church runs and hides, like, you know, like, like a bunch of cockroaches when you turn the light on, the light being Jesus Christ. In 1938, Time Magazine ran an article about Jarvis's flight to copyright Mother's Day. But by then, it was already too late to change the commercial trend. You know, you can sell anything today if you put, the, if you put Jesus Christ's name on it. I can sell garbage cans and say it was baptized by Jesus and John the Baptist and a bunch of idiots would buy them. Why? You got people that wear little uh, mustard seed rings and mustard seed necklaces, and they got to they buy these these palm leaves, and they buy the the crosses that hang from the ears and hang from their neck. They buy all kinds of junk in the name of Christianity. Yes, I'm against that junk. I don't care if you like me. God likes me. God loves me. 
In opposition to the flower industry exportation the holiday, Jarvis wrote, What will you do to root bandits, pirates, racketeers, kidnappers, and other termites that would undermine with their greed one of the finest and noblest, true, truest mo mo movements and celebrations? Despite her efforts, flower sales on Mother's Day continue to grow. So if you if, if you bought flowers for your mom or somebody bought flowers for your mom for mothers on Mother's Day, you went against Miss Jarvis's, the one who who came up with this holiday. You defeated her cause. Wow! Did you know that? That only to buy flowers makes money for the flower places. Anna Jarvis died in 1948, blind, poor, and childless. She wasn't a mother herself. Jarvis would never know what it was, ironically, that Florida's exchange that had paid the Florida the Florida. The Florida's exchange had paid for her care. I modern celebrations. When the United States Congress approved Mother's Day in 1914, they designated on the second Sunday of May and required that the president proclaim the holiday every year shortly prior to his commencement. Well, that's interesting. Huh? Did they still do that today? A recent example of the president. Presidential Mother's Day Proclamation. Typically, a family in the U.S. will devote most of all Mother's Day to activities honoring mom. Okay. Where, whether playing games, going out to dinner, or taking a weekend off, or going for a walk in a park. Well, going out to dinner and the big things that that restaurants will put in the newspapers and advertise, bring your mom here, well, only for them to get money, like the flower industry. Because if you didn't honor Mother on Mother's Day, you, who would buy flowers for the second Sunday of the May? Who would go out to eat the second Sunday of May? As a matter of fact, going out to dinner, there was a time with the blue laws, no one was to be open on the Lord's Day, Sunday. It was to be closed. Thank God for Chick-fil-A that closes their restaurants on Sunday so they can go to church. Do you know how Mother's Day is not in relation to the church? Because it's celebrating on God's Day. And we place for Mother, the Queen of Heaven. Taking a week off or going on a walk in a park. You can do that any day of the week. You can love your mother any day of the week. It's a shame for a child to think of his mother only one day out of 365. That's a shame. That you got to look to a calendar to think of your mother. It is common to give mom a card, expensive cards. That someone else wrote. Why can't you sit down and write your mother something from your own heart? It'd be more personal, more loving to her than if it came from your heart rather than paying two thirty eight. Flowers are also popular, dating back to the original celebration where Anna Jarvis handed out carnations to churchgoers. It also goes all the way back to the goddesses, remember? Younger children frequently give mom a handcraft gift. That's good. Older children and adults typically give mom a purchase a gift for Mother's Day. Yeah, it keeps business going. So loving your mother keeps business going. Indeed, with the United States, Mother's Day continues to be highly commercialized. Instead of loving your mother, you are giving your mother business credits, business dollars, tax money. The National Retail Foundation estimates Mother's Day is a $16 billion industry. 
Florida see their highest sales in May. U.S. restaurants claim that it is the busiest day of the year. Long distance telephone calls also peak on this day. The U.S. Postal Service experienced increased volume during the surrounding days. According to Hallmark, 96% of American consumers take part in shopping on Mother's Day. Only second highest to Christmas. And you do know who was involved in Christmas, right? The Virgin Mary and Jesus. Mary, Christ, Mass. Consumers spend an average of $152 per person on mom for Mother's Day in 2012. Have you ever spent $152 on your mom? But well, that's what it averages out to. I want you to look at the foundations of what Mother's Day is. I'm going to go back to it. I'm going to reread it. One of the earliest historic records of society celebrating any motherly de deity can be found among the ancient Egyptians who held an uh, annual, that means yearly, feast to honor the goddess Isis. Her stern yet handsome head is typically crowned by a pair of bull horns enclosed with a fiery sun orb, worshipping the sun. She is most often depicted sitting on a throne. I'm going to read Jeremiah again. And where does it say down here about her? It is interesting to note that the mother and son imagery of Isis and Horus, in which Isis cradles and suckles her son, is strikingly similar to that of the Virgin Mary and baby Jesus. Well, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Isn't that really interesting? Early festivals included eating honey cakes and sharing flowers of Mother Goddess. Cakes and flowers, Mother, Woman. The place of worship would be decorated with jewels, flowers, and other offerings. Mothers were presented with cakes and flowers, and beloved distant children came home to visit. Her mother's favorite flower was a carnation. Today in the United States, you have flowers, especially white carnations. And Anna Jarvis protested the sale of flowers. But the flowers remain on, hol on the holiday. I'm going to read to you Jeremiah 7, 18. The children gathered wood. You can make a craft out of wood. And the flowers needed the fire. Kindle the fire. We try it. The children gather the wood, and the, and the fathers kindled the fire. The women need their dough. Dough, money spent. Did you read what I said? How much money was spent on the average for one for one mother? How much was spent commercialization? How much flowers were bought? How many uh, Hallmark cards were sold? Dough, re me, cash, check, or money card? No, to make cakes, cakes, you cannot look at what we just read and look at the scriptures and see that they are not in line. They are aligned. And to pour out drink offerings onto other G-O-D-S, gods. That they may provoke me, God, to anger. Now, I am not against celebrating your mother. Without your mother, you wouldn't have life. Without your father, you wouldn't have life. 
Your mother was given to you by God. But when you take one day and the church celebrates that one day, and when we look at the history and the foundation of what Mother's Day truly is, it needs to be scrapped from the Christian, I mean Bible-believing church. Its roots are too deep into pagan idolatry. It's too deep into that Roman Catholic Church teaching. And I guarantee if you were to look into the Babylonian religion, I guarantee it would be there too, my friend. And it needs to go out of the church, but every day you need to think of your mom. I'm going to stop right there.